So first of all, Mina, congratulations on being a part of such a fantastic film. I truly enjoyed watching it. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I want to know, this is your breakthrough role, so do you remember the first moment you got that call? <laughs> I do, yeah. I was on set in Toronto, actually, and uh, I was finishing up another film that we were doing, and um, I got a call. My reps tried to play it down at first. They told me I'd have to fly back to London, and I was like, you know, another audition I'm going to have to fly back to London for? And they said, no, you're going to start working on the film. So I was uh, incredibly ecstatic, but we had to keep it a secret for, for a few days. Aladdin is such an iconic role, and I believe you grew up watching it. So what was it like putting that aside and bringing you on to this? You know, the first time I got a call back, um, I decided I'd stop watching the animation. So I actually stopped watching the animation, and we shot a lot in London, and they had the Broadway show. I didn't want to see that. I just really wanted to focus on the bigger themes at hand, uh, the journey that this character goes through. Um, he's a young man who lost his parents very young. He's an orphan. He's had to fight to survive. Uh, you know, he's been humbled his whole life, basically. And uh, he goes on this journey of personal identity and trying to figure out who he is as, as a human being. So I wanted to really just focus on those things. Was there anything else that informed your version of Aladdin? Um, you know, I, I, just my life, the way I grew up, I think I could relate to him a lot already. When I was in high school, um, I was the minority. I looked very different. I spoke a different language. I ate different food. And in a way, you know, Aladdin's like that in Agrabah. He's, he's loved by his community, but um, he's an outcast and he spends a lot of time, you know, on his own. So... Um, I just tried to pull as much from that as possible. So that was just leading into my next question. It's so refreshing to see such ethnically visible cultures on the big screen. And as an Egyptian Canadian playing the lead on a Disney film, that's pretty incredible. So how do you carry that your responsibility or process it? Um, you know, first and foremost, I'm just proud of what we were able to put together. Um, we represent an array of cultures and ethnicities in this film. Um, you know, not just the Middle East, but also Asia and Europe as well. A lot of our actors are based out of Europe. And, um, you know, I just continue to hope, uh, I hope to continue that trend in my career by uh, continuing to represent diverse artists. I'm starting a foundation uh, in Canada called the Ethnically Diverse Artists Foundation. And uh, we're hoping to make it easier for the younger generation of, of artists of color. Okay, that's great news. Yeah. Thanks. Obviously, we have to talk about Will Smith. Well, such we bring such an infectious personality wherever he goes. So, what was like that on set working with him? Yeah, he brings such an amazing energy. You know, we were working long days. The crews were really tired. We were all tired, and whenever Will walked onto set, he would just lift everybody's energy up and uh, really get us, you know, motivated and passionate about what we were doing. So. Um, it's been an incredible ride. <laughs> One of my favorite scenes is the jam scene with you and <laughs> Naomi and, yes. and Will. And I just found out that was all improv. Yes, mostly improvised, yes. We came onto set that day. There wasn't a lot written on the page. Uh, Guy blocked it out in this way where he created a lot of awkward space between us. So it already added to this awkward dynamic of the scene. And uh, by then, we had worked... A while together so he just let us play and I got to riff with Will and um, yeah it's one of my favorite parts of the film. <laughs> Did you often go off the rails and improv a lot and how do you keep a straight face when working at that? Um, you just focus on the character you know um, Will definitely riffed more than I did. That was my big scene to kind of improvise with him, but Will did most of the riffing in, in the other scenes. <laughs> and Jeannie gives, obviously gives great advice to Aladdin. So what was the best piece of advice that Will give to you? Uh, you know, he just told me to stay grounded, uh, stay true to myself, remember why I got into this in the first place. Um, you know, he just took two years off to kind of just recalibrate and, and rediscover uh, certain things and... Uh, I think that's important. Will doesn't do anything um, unless he puts his heart and soul into it, so um, it's, it's a good lesson to learn from him. Right. And lastly, in the spirit of granting wishes, if you could work with any actor or director and director in Hollywood. Ooh, okay, actor and director. Okay, that makes it a little easier. Oh, man, <laughs> there's so many. Um, Tarantino, Quentin Tarantino, I'd love to work with him. That would be a dream come true. And uh, actor, oh, man, it's hard. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to give you two. Al Pacino, just because I don't know how much is left uh, in Al Pacino. He's obviously coming with Irishman. And uh, Daniel Day-Lewis. 
But again, Daniel Day-Lewis said he retired, so who knows. <laughs> and what's next for you? Um, I'm going to be working on a series on Hulu called Reprisal. Uh, Warren Littlefield is producing. He produced uh, Handmaid's Tale and Fargo. And uh, it's a very dark series, uh, very different than this. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Jeffrey, sounds exciting. Thank you so much for the chat and wishing you all the best and congratulations once again. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.